Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about war paint. It's time to get our war paint on. War paint are, is very different than tattoos. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's something super easy you can add to your models that uh, is actually uh, very hard to screw up and purposefully messy and just a grand old time. So let's get into it. Uh, this is a simple thing. We're going to use two products here today. So we're going to use some kind of pigment. In this case, I prefer using uh, white pigment uh, because then I can c color it any color I want uh, because you're going to need to mix paint into this. So this is titanium white pigment from Vallejo, uh, a really useful pigment in general for doing like uh, sort of snow burn and, and stuff like that to, to, uh, to models and white streaking. And there's all sorts of great things about it. Doesn't matter. It's a good pigment to have. Uh, you can also use like any kind of gray or anything like that'll be fine. And then we're going to use some just ultramarine blue from Game Air. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to pick a nice blue color. One thing I'll say is when you're using a white pigment, use a darker color than what you want your final uh, uh, war paint to be. Because when I add a bunch of white pigment to a, you know, medium or darker blue paint, you're going to get a lighter blue color. That's just how that works because I shouldn't need to explain it, but I'm adding white to a color. So there you go. All right. So here on a little dry palette, which I'm sure you can't see, I have a little white pigments. It's right there. Uh, and then we're going to take a little bit of our ultramarine blue. We're going to put it down on there. I actually find this to be a horrible color on its own as a pure paint color, uh, but that's all right. It'll work perfect for this. All we're going to do is then we have like a nice, fairly junky brush. Don't use a nice brush for this. You don't you actually don't want something with a nice tip. You want something that's a little more flat. And then we're going to take some of that pigment. And we're just going to chunk it on in there. And you can see what I mean about it getting lighter, right? Just chunk it on in there. We want we want a chunky paint. You know, normally you're trying to avoid texture in your paint. Mm -mm. Not when you're doing war paint. You want it to be chunky. All right. So, mix up a nice batch there. Good. Okay. Larry the ogre, back again two in a row. Uh, we're going to do a little war paint of the maw on his back. So what I'm going to do is just start aggressively stippling. And you don't want this. You actually want this to be rough. Because war paint in the world is something that would be applied usually with fingers or, you know, with somebody's hand or something like that. It's not going to get down in the deep crevices and the deep layers. Think of uh, the, 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 the way I always explain this to people when I'm when I'm trying to talk about this in person is think about when the uruk in the Lord of the Rings get their war paint applied, right? It doesn't go into the deepest levels. So this is almost like sort of dry brushing, except I'm stippling it on and I'm purposefully avoiding those deeper areas. Now, because your paint is a lot of pigment, it will dry relatively fast. Uh, I wouldn't do this on a wet palette, by the way. I would only use a dry palette for this. A wet palette will only make your life harder. You can then be a little clever and creative. And if you want to reinforce some of your highlights, you add in a little bit more of that white pigment, but actually add just a tiny, tiny bit of water. And like up here on the top parts where there would be more exposure, we can come in and just stipple a little bit on these top areas where there would be a little more light reflecting. Okay. And then he has a nice, simple pattern. 
You can also go to a little bit of the darker paint itself, like your original paint. Mix in less of the pigment, more of the paint. And in the lower areas, you can stipple a little bit of that in. And that'll give you a little bit more shadow. So you can actually still very much respect sort of the traditional rules of, of miniature painting. You don't have to just throw all that out the window. But war paint is great for doing simple patterns like this. It's just a cool thing you can add. Uh, it can be, you know, sort of, this is a great way to do texture and mud and dirt on hands. Uh, so if we wanted to have, maybe he wants to have like some, uh, some little like marks across his face as well. Okay, we can do that. So we'll go back to our original war paint. This time we'll work rather thin, but we're just gonna sort of draw it down. And again, I'm avoiding those deep areas. So think of this almost like a dry brush, except I'm being much more purposeful with it. All right, so now he has a nice simple little war paint section on his face. You can do a skull over an orc face. You can do all sorts of stuff. It's it's fun, it's easy. Uh, and, you know, obviously the bigger the fig, the easier this will read. Uh, but there you go. That's your, again, we could follow the same rules. I can take a little bit more of the white, mix it in with just a little bit of, the wa of water to get it kind of flowing. And then I could mark the top parts here around the top of his head with something a little brighter top of his eyebrow, top of his lip and cheek. All right, and then we can take the darker one, mix it in there, and we could have the areas that are a little more unshadowed. Okay. So, there you go. War paint is easy. It's super fast. It's super fun. Uh, like I said, all it is is you mix a little pigment into the paint itself. You can see here's my different sort of mixes I was making. That's my main goop. And then up here were my darker ones. As I said, the main thing you'll want to watch out for is when you start mixing in raw pigment into your paint, it's going to dry very fast because you don't have a lot of wet paint in there. So you want to work relatively quickly. But just think about your design and then stipple it on. Uh, avoid the lower sections, so don't go into the deep crevices because it would have been, you know, in, in the world, another ogre would have walked up behind him and just went <coughs> with like his hand and, and, you know, dipped it in some paint and then rubbed this on. And when they did that, they would have avoided the deep creases, right? They would have, if so, if I take a little bit of this paint and make some war paint myself, right, out of this, and I just draw it across there, right? You can see how it avoids those deeper layers, right? And it's the same thing going on here where you want it to avoid the deeper cracks and crevices. So that's it. That's war paint, folks. It's, uh, it's simple. It's fun. Uh, the pigment gives it a little bit of thickness. That's why I like it there. Uh, it actually makes it have physical mass to it, which in this case is very useful. Uh, because war paint itself would be chunky and would be thick. And so by using just a little bit of raw pigment, we can increase that sort of texture in a very real, uh, in a very real way that will read true to the eyes. So there you go. Uh, he's ready for war. Larry's ready to go. So with that being said, thank you very much for watching. I certainly hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop those in the comments. Always happy to see that. If you've got suggestions for future videos, feel free to drop those down there as well. But as always, I thank you very much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.